Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if I was to go through my top 20 games of all time, I wouldn't be surprised if half of them were isometric style games. Such classic games such as Ultima 7, Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Baldur's Gate Throne of Ball, can you tell I like Baldur's Gate? Uh, then we've got XCOM, Diablo 1 and 2, so many great games were made in the isometric style, and that's exactly what we are going to look at today. We're going to look at using the great open source map tool called Tiled, and a set of open source tiles um, from Kenny and L to basically illustrate how you can create an isometric map. So let's look at the resources we are using and then we will step directly into it. So first off, we are using the tiled map editor. It is available at mapeditor.org. I will throw that link down below. Um, it's a cross-platform, open source. It's a, a really great project, actually. And I've covered it a couple times, and I'll show you some more resources at the very end of this video. And then on top of that, we are using Kenny NL's isometric pack. Uh, Kenny NL is available at Kenny, with an E there, dot NL. And then you basically just go to his assets, isometric. And we are using resources from here and here. What I've done is basically I've downloaded both of those packs and I've copied the files that I'm going to be using into different categories, broken down by the type of tiles they are. So you see we've got a folder here for carpets, floors, props, and then walls, pillars, etc. So inside is a whole bunch of tiles of about the same size. And of course you're going to need the tiled map editor, which I've already downloaded and you can see when you first run it, you get this unexciting screen. So what we're gonna do first is create the tile sets. That is just a collection of tiles to use, and then we'll go ahead and create a map. So start off by creating a new tile set like so, and we're gonna do one for one for each one of these things. So we've got carpets, floors, props, and then walls and such. Uh, so we'll do carpets first. All you do is that, and we're gonna select based on a tile set, on, on a collection of images, instead of just a single collection, a single image with a bunch of tiles in it. We're gonna have a bunch of individuals. We'll save this guy as, um, and I will put this in the same folder as everything else, which is temp, map demo, all right, so we'll call this one carpets.tsx. So you'll notice tile sets are in the folder TSX. Now that you've created that, we're just gonna go ahead and go to tile set, add tiles, and we go into our tiles folder, pick carpets, select them all, and then pick okay. So there we've created our first tile set. We can just go ahead and save that sucker up here. So file save. And now we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing again. So create file new tile set. Uh, so that was carpets. What else do we got? Uh, floors, so floors, pick the floors, oh, I'm, I'm doing that wrong. So we gotta save it first, so let's go back up a folder. So here, we'll save that as floors, now we'll go tiles, add tiles, go into the floors category, select them all, and click OK. And we'll save that guy, do it again, file new, uh, tile set, and this time we are doing props. We'll call this guy props. Once again, it's still a collection of images. Save as, save that as props. Guess what we're gonna do next? Yes, we're gonna add the tiles from props, like so. And then finally, floors, walls, and everything else. And we'll call that one foundation. So we'll save that, create a new one, new tile set. Uh, foundations, save as, save that, go here, tiles, add tiles, and here. All right, so there we have all of our tile sets now done. Uh, you, you can scroll through them here. You can do control, middle mouse button to zoom in and out. But now we have our tiles that we can paint with. It is time to go ahead and create a map. Now the key is you have to match the resolution your tiles were made for. And what we've got here is a two to one ratio, which is very, very common in tile sets. That means the tiles are, um, basically they make up a diamond, whereas it's twice as wide as it is high. And then you slot these all together to create your isometric map. So let's go ahead and create a new map. New map, and what you want to choose is orientation as isometric, right there. Uh, CSV file should be fine, or you could do it compressed or um, uncompressed base64 binary encoding. Now the choice there ultimately comes down to the game engine you are using, but you can also change these after the fact. And then you've got a choice, you could either do a fixed map size of a set number of tiles, or you can actually make it infinite in height. In this case, I'm just gonna do a really small map. So 16 by 16. And then the key thing is setting your tile. And what we wanna do here is 256 
and 128. Now that is going to be determined by the graphics you used, but that should be a good size. And then we'll go ahead and save this map as isometric map. All right, so there you go. So you see now we have this drawing grid in which to create our level. If you go over here, we've got um, templates. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, let's see, our tiles are all available right here. So let's just scroll that down a little bit. Okay, where is it? There it is. All right. So we've got floors, carpets, and so on. So we got our carpet here. Let's, they're all zoomed in for some reason. Foundational, our props. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is basically start working on layers. It's all about building on top of each other. So the bottom most layer will be obscured by the layer above it and above it. So let's go ahead and create our layers. So we've got our first layer, we will call that foundations. And then on top of the foundations, we will have our carpet. So we'll create a new layer, it's a tile layer, and we'll call that carpet. Above that, we have our tile layer of, oops, actually I want floors. I'll show you how you can change the order in a second because floors obviously would be below the carpet. So we just drag that so that they're in the proper order. So obviously this is the bottom most of your options. And then finally we will do one last tile layer called props. Now another thing that's very common is to want to mark off uh, trigger zones, etc. So we'll do that as well. So we'll also go in here and go new object layer. And I'll show you how that works in a second and we'll just call that one triggers. Now you can put this below or above props, it doesn't really matter. In fact, it doesn't matter at all where that one's positioned, but uh, I will show you how that works in a second. So first off, we have our uh, foundation. So we're gonna start with a foundation, select that layer over here, select your foundation's props, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start with a, a simple flood fill. We're gonna fill the entire map with one kind of floor. So go in here, locate the, uh, oops, actually, no, you know what? I'm doing this in the wrong order. We want foundations to be we want floors to be the bottom most. So we'll start with our floor layer, we'll pick here, and we'll pick our base floor tile. So um, this guy looks pretty good. We'll come up here to the flood fill, and then boom, our base map now has that tile as its source. And you can start layer, you can change them out. So if you wanna have a couple of these like with cracked or peeling, you can switch back over here to stamp mode away from that. And now we can edit an individual tile and change it out. So you notice we're getting slight differences in it. You can also rotate tiles. So you can have it at different orientations or directions. So if we wanted to do one on that corner as well, we could like so. You can zoom in and out of the map easily enough like this. Uh, go ahead and I'm, I'm actually fairly content. We're not doing much here. So let's do a couple of uh, wood floors here just because this is not gonna be the greatest looking map you ever saw, but we are going to get at least the principles down. So we've created our base layer. So now let's add some foundations. These are things like your walls and pillars and columns and so on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a just a standard wall. So here's a wall right there. As you can see, it will layer towards the back of our map. Middle mouse button, I can pan, and we can just start painting them and paint down the whole edge. And there we go. So now we have walls on that end, and then we can do one for the other direction. Like so. so this is gonna overwrite that one corner. So we're gonna need a corner tile out of here. And there is one here. Where did you go? It's that, I want the opposite, there we go. So we want that corner to paint that corner right there. So there we've got the outlines of a level. Now we can do a couple of infills. So if we want, we can do uh, an inner arc inside of our house like this. Oops, that was unfortunate. You can also click shift and do a line all at once like that. And then kind of, it's just more and more and more of this. So if we want, we could add a couple of pillars throughout our house. And now it's time to add a little bit of life. Oops, I accidentally deleted my floor there. Not sure why. Let's put a little wood floor in underneath. Oh, um, oops, I gotta switch. So you gotta make sure you switch to the right layer though. So I'm switching to the floor layer. Now I'm gonna go into the foundation layer. Go back to the foundation and let's put our pillar on top of that floor. So you see how the layers build on top of each other. That's the most important thing to really grasp here. And then you can kind of keep going. So if we want to add a couple of carpets to our world, we can come in here to the carpets, grab one that goes in the right direction and drag it across. Now let's actually, we'll do a shift click to create. Hold down shift. And straight line that guy. So we got, we got our carpet in the world. We can do another one that goes this way. Now I don't have a tile for handing between the two. Now you'll notice one thing I just did there is I painted a bunch that I don't want to have. And you can get rid of them, just go up here, grab the eraser, 
and then delete the tiles. Keep in mind, it's all about the layer that you're currently working on. And then finally, we can get into some props. So let's go ahead and create some props. We could add a couple of barrels along this wall, on that wall, on that wall. These people drink a lot. Add a couple of wardrobes along walls like that. And you just kind of keep going until you have your map as you like it. Very straightforward, very simple for the most part. Now, the final thing I'm going to get into is the triggers. And this is where you would probably put in a lot of your game-related logic. You can put in things and you can give them properties. So, for example, I could have it, uh, let's say I want to have a door. I'll put a door in there. Uh, so let's go back to the foundations. Let's go over to foundations. Let's find us a door. Actually, I think my doors are actually in props. Nope, must be in foundations. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm going to put a door in right here. So there we go. Oh, it's offset. Uh, I need one that's at the back, or I need to do the door over here. All right, there we go. So we got a door over here. I'm going to zoom in on this guy. And what we could want is when the player gets to this range, we might want some code to trigger or so, some logic or hotspot to happen. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can switch over to our triggers layer right here. That Remember, we created this as an object layer. And when we switched over to that, you'll notice our commands over here changed. So now what we can do is define uh, polygons or fixed shapes, and then we can just basically draw them on the map. So come on. Oh, wait, let me go. I need to add a new one. So right click new. Object layer. Okay, one second. I'm doing this wrong. Oh, yeah, I'm doing edit as opposed to insert. So the insert is this triangle looking guy right here. And now you can sort of define the shape that is going to be your collision volume for when people get close to the door. Like so. And you'll notice over here we've got properties for it. So we could say call this guy door approach trigger. And we could actually go ahead and give it some custom properties if it wants. So come on down here, hit the plus button, and then you can access this stuff in your code. So we could have it go to a file, to a color, to a bool, to a string. So we'll just do a string. We'll say uh, door one approached. And then that value is uh, file one dot level or whatever. So you, your data is available there. You can attach data in the, um, the tiled side of things, and then you can handle it or extract it in your code. So you do now have this collision volume there. Now, the one last thing I should probably talk about that I didn't is with these tiles, we can actually set up uh, collision volumes on them. So for example, if in your game, you did not want your character to be able to walk through pillars, you could come back here to foundations where we, this is the foundation tile map, the TSX file. And then what we can do is click over here and we can hit the collision editor. And then you can pick the tile that you want to deal with. So for example, this particular uh, column or pillar and then we can either define a rectangle or a polygon to the same basic shape stuff we had before. And we can do a collision volume around that polygon. So then in your game code, you can know, okay, if the person hits this, there will be a collision and it can't continue. And you can do other things in tiled as well. So for example, uh, I could create uh, spline paths that define where a character can uh, walk or where the AI should go. And then there's all kinds of advanced functionality that I'm not even going to get into. Things like automatic train generation. You can have it so that uh, each edge kind of, they all work together so that, you know, if you've got water and it goes into sand, it will create the transition for you. There's Wang tiles for doing uh, random automatic level generation and much more. So we're only really covering the surface of what tiled can do. But I think in that, that 14 minutes time, you saw just how much of your 3D game or your, sorry, your 2D game you can create and use with Tiled. And the amazing thing about Tiled is the level format is pretty much ubiquitous. In almost every single uh, 2D game engine will support loading of Tiled maps, either through a plugin or natively directly inside of that engine itself. And if you're interested in learning more about actually integrating Tiled within your game, well, I've got you covered there. I've actually done a in-depth tutorial series. I will link this down below. But we go through, uh, these are all videos on using Tiled itself. There's even another tutorial there on isometric maps. But then if you're interested in how the actual coding side of things work, I show you, this is an example from libgdx, which is Java-based, but the code should be immediately understandable to just about anybody. It's very, very readable, but this code will walk you through the process of first loading your map, and then you'll see when we get onto the second part, we do some things a little bit more advanced, like adding a player character in and then showing how that player character can be integrated with the world. So you see that here we're drawing on top of a tiled layer. And then in this particular case, we show how you can actually set it so that your character sprite is interacting with the layers as it was supposed to be. 
And then finally, we get into actually showing you how to create an animated sprite and deal with it in your code. So if you want to have animated water, you can. So this should be, as you can see, now it's animated frame by frame. So if you're interested in seeing how to actually use Tiled in code, I have this example. I also have one for um, TypeScript and Phaser. So they're both linked off of, if you go back to this page itself, both of those code examples are available right here. And I do highly recommend, if you have not tried Tiled yet, do check it out. It is probably the best 2D map editor out there. It's better than what is integrated into most game engines. Uh, like for example, if you've done tiles in uh, Godot, you'll find the process of creating tiles and collision maps is a bit painful. And you'll probably find that using tiled itself is actually a bit quicker to work with. Uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing tiled used with specific game edges, if there's a specific tool or tutorial you'd like to see covered. I love giving tiled uh, as much exposure as I can because it is a great open source project and it has been the lifeblood of many a 2D games. And as I mentioned very much to start this, vegan, uh, this video, I loved programs like, or applications like um, Baldur's Gate and uh, Ultima 7 and Diablo, and those were like the key games to my life. So the isometric format has very near and dear to my heart. And it's cool to see that it's continuing. A lot of times now, it's faux isometric. It's just a 3D game with that camera set. But if you're looking at creating true 2D isometric games, Tiled is your boy. All right, that's it for now. Hopefully, some of you guys found that interesting or useful. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.